You're watching the number one fitness podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Hey, look, uh, if you leave a comment underneath in the first 30 minutes that we post this video, this podcast, and we like your comment, we pick it, we think it's the best one, look what you win. You win this amazing t-shirt, uh, proven to add inches to your biceps or shrink your waist, whichever one you want. Um, actually, it just looks cool. It doesn't do those things. But you can actually win this t-shirt. So put a comment right now in the first 30 minutes. Also, subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure you like it, share it with your friends, and turn on your notifications so that next time you're in here first and you might be able to win something else. Uh, we give away shirts, but we're also going to give away a lot of other stuff. By the way, if you hear us talking about uh, a product from one of our sponsors or whatever in the episode, you want to check out and see if there's like a discount code, go to Mind Pump Partners. Dot com uh, and you can look at all that stuff. Also, this month we're running a promotion on a workout program bundle called the Phase Two Bundle. It includes Maps Performance, which is our athletic working uh, workout program. It's about three to four months long, and Maps Aesthetic, which is our bodybuilder workout program, which is also about three to four months long. Put them together, you get a beautiful blend of sexy body, sexy moves. It's really cool stuff. It's like if Justin and Adam had a baby together, right? Mm. If they had a baby, You've tried. That's what the phase two bundle, <laughs> what you did? No. Which, that's no, what the so phase two true. bundle Fake is news. all about. Um, by the way, at retail, would cost you almost 300 bucks, but this phase two bundle special, $79.99. That's it. One-time payment, $79.99. Just go to mapsfebruary.com. Enjoy the show. Yeah, be mindful of your breathing. Your heavy breathing. I think it's Justin. Ever since he started getting all bulky and big, dude. No way, man. Yes. I, if anything, he weighs the same, dude. Yeah, I'm 227. Mm -hmm. I weighed it yesterday. On the dot. Yeah, 0. 0.6. Actually. On the dot. <laughs> Doug, does that mean everything's go? Everything is systems I'll, go here. I we are go. I want to talk about the uh, uh, National Woman's Day competition we're doing. Mm. You Let's guys see that it. we're doing that? Yeah. We're, so March 1st is uh, National Woman's Day. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a cool little Does that mean we got to buy you something? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Yeah, I'll yeah. get jokes today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, anyway, just, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is for all the women out there. We're doing a, uh, a, de like a deadlift thing, right? So yeah. uh, I, I don't remember what sparked this. I was talking to Choke the other day, and she post reposted some of the videos. Like A lot of times on the story, she'll repost people that put um, their videos up and tag Mind Pump. Mm -hmm. And she was reposting uh, a, a couple of like deadlifting videos. And some of these girls are like really strong. I know. Yeah. And that gave me this idea. I'm like, you know what? Uh, National Women's Day is coming up soon. We always talk about deadlifting and squatting more, especially deadlifting because I think a lot of people don't deadlift. Um, let's do something tied to that. Let's do a hashtag and everybody that posts it in their story will enter in a chance to win some giveaway. So when this is live right now, you should be able to go over to the Instagram page. Mind Pump Media page, right? Yes, the mm -hmm. Mind Pump Instagram page and look at uh, the details on what you can win and uh, what to do. Mm. So, that, I, what would you say? I think I'd say deadlifts and squats are probably the sexiest exercises yeah. if you're in the and gym. And you never see it in those magazines, you no. know, like Shape Magazine and all these things. They're right. always like, yeah, with these little tiny weights. Oh, no, I saw you see, a, you see a woman, and I don't mean it in a perverted way. I mean, if you see a woman squat or deadlift properly and they're strong, it's just the mo you just appreciate it so much. Yeah. It's like wow, it's a thing of beauty. We've it talked is. about this on the show before. I think it's uh, I think it's a trainer thing. I think it's like for us, mm. yeah. movement is sexy. Yeah. So I think when you when you spend most of your career, <laughs> oh, she's doing curls. Critiquing, in general, critiquing form and yeah. trying to help people get great form. It's rare to see really good. Yes, form. Yes, exactly. Mm. So when you see it, it's a it's a very attractive quality. Dude, speaking of totally. Instagram, I am permanently shadow banned. I think I saw that permanently. Oh. Do I you know people you, people send me pictures. They try to look me up. Right? They try yeah. to like they type in mind pump Adam or Mind Pump Justin or Mind Pumps Out. My name will not come up. You have yeah. to type it in. In fact, what are your other options? You you deserve it. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get you on those, <laughs> those like, stupid memes. Gennaro oh, yeah. Instagram it was so, social media. Nah, it's so dumb. Permanently banned. So ridiculous. Oh. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. You know what? Everybody should follow me. Mind Pumps Out. Show Instagram what time it is. <laughs> yes, you know yes, what I mean? That works for Just you. give them the finger. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Give Stop the face. It's been months. Stop offending people. You what did I do? Huh? I didn't even do it. You That's know which funny. one it was? It was mm -hmm. literally, it was a picture of 50 Cent, not the money, but the rapper, and he had Donald Trump's hair. And I got a notification that it's a doctored uh, photo, 
And then I and then that was it after that. It's I got, so anything Donald Trump related. Oh, you're done. Ridiculous. I got a notification for uh, posting Tom McDonald that it had something related with COVID. We oh, got, it said COVID. Yeah, it had I like got, a COVID. I got, yeah, I got a COVID warning for that. I'm like, how? What the hell? We're on. We're on. They're looking at us. It's all mm. your fault. It it is they weren't fault. even paying attention to Justin. Hey, I, yikes! I, no, nobody pays attention to you guys. Yeah. If you hang out with me, man, <laughs> social media watches. <laughs> oh no, my views have been going through the roof. Yeah. Like, Damn it. Yeah. yeah I know. It's been it's, it sucks, yeah. but whatever. It's the way it is. And it brings me to something. I did watch Fake Famous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Can we talk about it? Dude, did you watch it, Justin? I didn't. All right, but I, I will listen to this conversation. He was that kid who never used to do his homework. You know that? Justin. <laughs> <It's a> fucking, <laughs> all right, I was watching hand. other things. Yeah, yeah uh, you guys have ideas. My dog, I have ate, ideas. My dog yeah. ate my homework. Yeah. <laughs> you were watching yeah. other things? Where, where were you watching? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. It was, it was like In in the Dark, I think is the name of it. It's on um, Netflix. It was about this like blind girl. She's really funny. Yeah. It's actually a really good show. But uh, again, this is like... Totally not in my normal go-to type of a show, but uh, worth looking into. Is it about her life and how she lives? Yeah, and she's like, and she's really sarcastic and and like, uh, you know, wants everybody to treat her normal and everything. And so she's just like, you know, like uh, anyway, she she's like an alcoholic and has all these wow. issues and stuff. But but like, it's really funny, like in a, in a satirical kind. Is of Is it on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll check it out. All right, yeah. back to fake famous. Okay. So fake famous is crazy because I didn't. Really realize i knew people would go and buy followers yeah but i did not realize just how advanced the fake follower business is i had no idea yeah. i used to think that i could tell if someone had fake followers because i'd see their followers then i'd look at their comments and their likes they didn't match i'd be like oh it's a whole bunch of so fake i followers. think originally i think originally that that was true so i originally that's how it started but i think Insta oh, I'm the first one. To talk. That was an accident. Oh, Did we not call that? Yes, you know dude. what? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It's, it's too easy tell, to tell the audience you're talking okay. shit before we got started. I was. So we changed our mics so that you know you could see our faces more on on camera. And uh, I'm like, there's no way you guys are gonna touch your mic because with the problem with these mics, if you touch them, you can kind of hear it. Yeah. So Doug's like, don't touch your mics. And I can't. My legs are huge, bro. Every time <laughs> I, was, I cross my well, legs, I, it I is. hit everything. It's the legs. <laughs> I cross my leg. And it anyways, blossoms. anyways, back to uh, fake. Famous. So I, the algorithm originally was uh, they, they you would do that, right? You would act, buy these followers, but uh, Instagram changed their algorithm to pick that stuff up yeah. so they can tell. So, of course, somebody's came up with businesses to. I didn't realize beat it. it was, it's literally like a billion dollar business to, to, fake, to fake out Instagram. Yeah. So, in other words, you buy followers, you also buy likes, you buy comments. They trickle in the followers, the likes, and the comments so that, the, so that it looks real. But here's the crazy part that blew me away. First of all, they estimate that some of the biggest followings on Instagram, people like Kim Kardashian, for example, right, right. That, uh, up to 50, 50 to 60% of her followers are probably fake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, right? He's got 500 million followers on Instagram, right? Probably two to 300 million are not real. Now you ask yourself, uh, why aren't they policing this? Yeah. Here's the part that blew me away. Because it's in everybody's best interest to turn a blind eye, right? The influencers, they like the fake followers because it gives them the appearance of being more famous and more popular, popular than they are, especially people who have like 100,000 followers, 300,000 followers, those kind of, you know, what they call like, you know, micro influencers. They have, they, for them, it's good because it looks like they're more popular than they are and mm -hmm. they can attract more attention and get more free stuff from sponsors or whatever. Instagram, they turn a blind eye to, to the fake followers because it looks like they have more users. Hmm. And so no, it's so it, it remind you know what it reminds me of? It mm. reminds me of steroids in professional sports, mm. uh, where they're like, "Oh, we're going to test the athlete." Good analogy, but really they're like, eh, "We're going to let Could them." Could they use get it in trouble with that potentially with their shareholders? You know, in terms of the, when they report numbers, you know, for instance, but like they, it's totally off. Uh, you know, in terms of their user base, that's There's, an interesting theory. It's it, but how could you possibly? How would you even know? Because it's so the bots are so good. Well, yeah. like they were showing it on there, and this is all bots. Because before that, it was like factories of people that were like literally signing up like continuously. Bro, all they day. leave these bots leave comments. Yeah, they'll leave a bunch of comments. You Did you see tell. how they create them too? They take. Uh, all these real people and they take pieces from it. Yep. So Susie from here, then they use this person's last name and this person's yep. address. Oh, wow. So they take- And you can pick, follow, you can literally tell, it's a billion dollar, so having fake followers, fake comments, fake likes is a billion dollar industry by itself. Yeah, And, and you can literally tell them, I need, 
I want 50% of the, the 50,000 followers I'm buying to be conservative or liberal or female or male or between these ages. You can literally mold and shape. It's just all a big facade. It's a big facade. And so what they did in this documentary is they took three regular people and then they used the strategy to see what would happen. Well, one girl in particular ended up getting tons and tons of followers, fake followers, and then got real followers. But then she got a bunch of free shit because she looked like she was whatever. But it's so easy to game the whole system. Yes. So this is where my thought process is going with this. I'm seeing all this and I see Instagram, for example, or other social media platforms. It's in their best interest to turn a blind eye. Influencers are doing this and they're gaming the system. Nobody's really catching on. This is a bubble. Social yeah. media is a bubble. So now do they have a specific number where it sort of it, it like tips the scale and like momentum, like the hockey stick sort of effect? If you get like a hundred or 200,000 or is it like a million where everything really starts to snowball? Uh, you mean in terms of getting attention and stuff? Yeah. They didn't talk about that, but mm. it, it is interesting, right? Because if you have a hundred thousand followers that appear to be real and they, and you get a certain amount of comments at a particular time on a post, it's more likely to go on the explore page. You're going to get more attention and then of course you appear to be legitimate yeah and yeah. so you can make money i don't think it's a bubble though i mean uh oh I, it's it's a bubble dude. no i don't think it's a I bubble think so. you think everything's a bubble i think that it's <laughs> it's just like it's a bubble it's a bubble, bubble. Yeah. bubble everything's a bubble no bubble, i don't bubble. think it's a bubble i think that <laughs> I, I, bubble, bubble. I i think your analogy actually i do really like your analogy with um sports and that like baseball with steroids you think steroids aren't still happening in baseball of course they are you know, even after the it's big, it's in their best interest to let exactly it because right. yeah, more people watch. So, if anything, your point of that it's in in the best interest of Instagram because everybody's in on it. They'll find ways to just kind of brush it on the rug, mm. slap a few people on the like bust a few people, just like they do with steroids. It's right. like it's like pay to play. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna pick the we're not gonna pick the biggest people. We're not gonna we're not gonna like shame Ronaldo. He's too famous. He's got too much going for him that would hurt all of us. We'll find some. We'll find this kid out in Indiana who's got two hundred thousand followers, and we'll make a we'll make an example out Here, of him. Well, That's what they do in baseball. Here's yeah. why I think it's a bubble. First of all, I don't think it means that social media will disappear. When I use the term bubble, what I mean is that the signals are inaccurate, and so at some point you'll see some kind of a correction. So, what are the inaccurate signals? Well, Instagram may say that they have an average, they have you know a, a billion users. Okay, that's inflated. That's not real. Followers may say that they have so many hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. That's inflated. And eventually, companies that are spending money trying to get a return are going to start to see this is not valuable. Very few of these people are valuable enough to invest in on social media. I don't know. Back to your back to your analogy with the sports again. Hmm. The uh, okay, RBIs, home runs, hits, all inflated. All all a bubble. All still. Yeah, they're really hitting them. Uh, so. I mean, are, they're not fake hits. Yeah, but it's inflated. It's because, not a robot hitting be, the ball because of the, because of steroids. It's inflated. Yeah, but that's a that's a little bit it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different because it's it's really happening. You're really watching the game with social. And here's the other. Here's my other. Uh, I mean, for okay. So and and the, and the 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 documentary covered this right. So yeah, yeah. Some of it's fake, but there's still a lot of real. That girl who had a hundred thousand sure. followers. She has she has five times at least the real followers that she had when she first started it. So you're still getting, and so brands are still going to get. I think it just changes like the. That's why like when we it's, it's such a game. It's like why anybody we, could go on there and make that shit happen for themselves. Yeah, and it's 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 really crazy uh, mm -hmm. to see. But here's my other argument to why it's a bubble. Uh, every study that's coming out in social media, and it's becoming mainstream now. You're starting to see more and more of this, shows that it's negative, negative, negative. You know, uh, Arthur Brooks brought this up on when I interviewed him recently, where he said. Anything over 30 minutes of social media use uh, contributes to more loneliness, more anxiety, more depression. There's studies that show this with kids, with adults, with couples, with everybody. So I think at some point, it's gonna, we're, we're getting to the point where it's going to... And I know, by the way, uh, three, four years ago, I knew nobody that did this. I don't know anybody that said, oh, screw it. I'm, I'm canceling all my social media uh, platforms. I, I can't do it anymore. Do you know how many people I know that have done that in the last year or two? Tons. So I feel like what we see, this explosion of social media, I feel like it's going to get, be a correction. I don't think it's going to go away, but I think it's not going to be what we what we think it's going to be. I think it's like people are going to start to, to come off. I don't and know, dude. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I mean, Doug, you could probably look at the look up, um, 
Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube uh, trend of gaining users over the last five years. Fake, fake users. <laughs> <laughs> fake. I mean, it's all you know, fake, all fake. fake you, know, it's, users. you know what though? Because in the documentary, the, one of the guys running it, he said, you know, there's companies that can analyze people's followers and tell you how many are fake or real. So he did it to one of the people that he knew, like for sure, because he did it himself, had, you know, let's say 50,000 fake followers. So he said, let's see how accurate this is. He went to this company, paid them. They came back and they're like, oh, only, you know, only 500 followers are fake. The rest are real. And he goes, that whole business is a scam too. Where, you know, the companies will go to these companies and say, hey, we want to work with this influencer. Mm. Uh, can you let us know if their followers are real? They, they can't. It's yeah. too fucked up. I mean, it's even in our space with podcasting. Huh. I mean, there's there's rumors that so many of these podcasters inflate their numbers. I have to deal with this all the time when we talk to partners and sponsorships. Yeah, That's why the CPMs are so low. They want to pay such a low dollar amount when we first initially meet somebody. And I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah. I know what our business converts. I'm not going to give you that. Well, I, don't so I don't give a shit if that's what you do with this podcast, this mm -hmm. podcast, and that podcast. We've been doing this long enough that I know what we should generate. So here's my my question to you, because you mm. obviously are on the front line with that with us, right? You manage that. You, 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 you talk to the sponsors all the time. Uh, do you think the days of paying a podcast or paying an influencer based off followers are going to be over soon and it's going to be all based off of conversion? Because that's really the only way to know, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it, they, they use that as an initial way to get started. So there's this $20 CPM as like a generic number, which is $20 for every thousand people that listen to your podcast Right, is this generic formula that most partners have been told. You so can get dumb. online. Yeah. You can get online and Google like what that is and it'll, it'll, and I don't know who created it or who started it, but that is a starting place for most businesses that want to advertise in the podcasting space will go with. And so they'll come to us and they'll be like, oh, okay, so you guys have this many downloads, so that means we're going to pay you this much money. And I go, no, it's not how it works. This is how much we charge. And they go like, well, that's crazy. We pay this. I said, I, I can't speak yeah. to these other podcasts and what they do when they convert. What I can show you is all the partners we do work with, what we convert at, and what to expect when you work with us, but I'm not going to play by this rule, this you know, this number that somebody just made up out of thin air because that's what the average of everybody else yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. But it's skewed because of that because yeah. it, because I'm sure there's a lot of fake. I'm sure there's a lot of people. Here's another thing too. Hmm. Uh, we we use the analytics from like Libsyn, for example. Like iTunes only gives you so much information and, mm -hmm. and data, and most partners uh, there's not a way for them to fact check our stuff. We can just say whatever. We so want. you can say whatever you want. You know, so you could say like, oh, yeah, we get 10 million downloads per op episode. And they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. So then this is what we should start you at. Now, the thing is, most partners will not sign a, like, we have all long-term contracts because we've worked with most of these people already. So once they see the perform, that's what I mean. I feel like it's going to be like that. Like, followers aren't going to mean shit. It's already happening. It's yeah. already happening. At least in our space, it's already happening where, you know, partners will be like, okay, well, we want to do a trial. You know, let's yeah. do a three yeah. commercial, four commercial trial. We'll pay whatever rate you're saying it's worth, and then and then if we'll continue. Wasn't there some out. competitive uh, apps that were coming out for podcasting that were trying to provide like you know better metrics and things like that, and mm. paid behind wall options like and Chartable things? and stuff like that? You yeah. mean? Yeah, I think that's one of them. So but. Chartable is a, is a is a pretty good resource to kind of kind of see where things are trending. But then again, it's still. It's really like you. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, iTunes is. Um, it's because it's in everybody's best interest to keep it a mystery. I, it's so obnoxious. You know, you know what I'm it's saying? just like, can we just but, like, can we just go like apples with apples dude, here? That whole the whole world of social media, and and now we knew it was fake. People put their best forward. They doctor their images or whatever. But it's so much more fake than that. It's like. The fakest shit you could ever imagine. The they truth is, though, even if we knew what was real, it's still there'd still be a major variance. Okay, so let's let's take uh, two uh, you know insta famous people that both have exactly a million followers, and let's like pretend, real real. Let's right. pretend they have exactly real. There there could be a huge discrepancy in how one converts versus of the other. Of course, yeah. yeah. Which one so, has more influence? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's going to be so hard to pin this down, is because it's like okay. I can work with this one influencer that has a million followers. They, they We convert X amount from them. This other one has a million followers. They only convert this. And so regardless if one is saying they have 1.5 million followers yeah. or 1.7, it doesn't really I matter. I think they said, didn't they say, I can't remember the number, but they said something silly like there's over, it was a big number. Like there's a hundred million people on Instagram that have a million followers or something insane like that. Yeah, yeah. Like a hundred million people what? on Instagram with a million followers. They're like, are that many people yeah. really that famous? 
And you think about it, and you're like, oh, like, no way. Yeah, and and again, now speaking from a consumer standpoint, forget the the you know the sponsors and all that stuff. You're a kid or whatever, and you go on social media. You are watching the most fake shit ever, ever. It's literally a sitcom, 100%. They were showing in this documentary. Like, there, It's also big business in LA to have stages where that, people show up to blew, pay. That blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, that blew my mind. It's that actually that, a smart business if you think about well, it. Well, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's a very smart business. But that there is like little warehouses that are these staged, like looking like you're at a fancy restaurant, looking like you're in a private jet. Like, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, did you see the one where they, they took like a toilet seat? And yes. they had her stand. They had the girl stand next to a picture. Of I wanted. Like, I wanted to try. She's it like flying over an island, and, she, and it, it's a close up, and it looks like she's sitting next to the airplane. Yeah, he's like, holding a toilet seat cover. Yeah, get out of here, yes, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then in the picture, when you pan out, it looks like she's really flying yeah. over somewhere, and, it, and it's a window. Seat. And, and it's all it's all total complete bullshit. It's yeah. disgusting she's to me. A, As I'm watching, a big like, ass a, lie. A big lie. Dude. Well, you have that, and then you add in the, the. I forget the name of the app that I brought up like a year ago or whatever. That's I, I forgot how many users it has, but it had hundreds of millions i believe how many people were using it, it which changes your face your eye your skin yeah. like, like face tune or, or yeah or it, was, like what, it was something like at that. what point do you think cgi is going to get so good and so cheap that companies are going to make fake people well, to yeah. promote their shit well remember that episode i like i was like really geeking out into that ai uh, show that was on uh, youtube tv yes, yes yes yeah and so you had a uh, will F uh i am Right from the Black Eyed Peas, who basically created a an avatar, digital avatar of himself, to then represent his his Instagram and all this stuff, and so he would actually respond to people and do all that stuff, like you know, and it was all programmed, and so this is something that they're working on already. Well, here's what I think is going to happen. This is what I told Katrina. Okay, after watching that fake famous, you go find in L.A. struggling actor who's like living paycheck to paycheck. They're broke. They want to make it so bad, but they have acting skills. Decent looking. You go hire them for twenty, thirty thousand $30,000, which is probably a lot of money to them at the point where they're at in their career. And you do exactly what they've done. But the, I'm Coca-Cola or I'm Mind Pump. And I'm a, I go find this person. I invest 20, 30 grand. And they, I am going to build their fake following literally just to promote my business. Sure. Yeah. What a smart investment for some of these companies. Oh, yeah. I mean, that girl who got up to 100,000 followers, regardless if some of the a percentage were fake, there was still a lot of people that were influenced by what she was telling Crazy. them to go buy. Who's this, Doug, that you just brought up? Lil McQuayla. This is a <laughs> okay. AI uh, Instagrammer with over AI 3 Instagrammer. million followers. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. When it gets to the point where you can't tell, like yeah. this is going to get weird. Oh, it's going to get really That's weird. why I feel like it's a bubble. You know what? It's almost like it's going to go, it's going to make be full circle. At what point do you think people are going to be like, I only want to meet people in person? You know, it's so, so crazy. It's like you feel like we're getting so much transparency because of access to information and everything. But now we're just seeing all the same old tricks coming back. Like Just better. I looked, yeah, dude, I, I was looking at this, this one site because I was looking for like actors and talent and things like that. And there's like casting calls literally to come in and take pictures of before and after, you know, for this fitness company. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, you motherfucker. Oh, we've known that's been going on oh, forever. forever. Yo, like, here, you, here. I want to know is how how much of a loser do you have to be to follow an AI fucking Instagram account? Well, I mean, there's 3 million losers. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Either that or it's 3 million AI accounts. Yeah, exactly. It's all bots, dude. Well, yeah, AI is going to become self-aware and just follow itself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're going to get you know, rid of real people. We, have, be all we actually haven't talked about bots. this in a long time, but here's what they do with uh, before and afters in, in fitness. Well, it used to be in magazines, but now we on Facebook ads. Yeah, this is legit now. I know people who've done this. Here's what they do. Oh, I've been asked to do this. They will competing. take they will take someone like let's Adam used to be a pro IFBB competitor, right? Was a physique competitor. They find Adam after his competition. So he's shredded and whatever. It's how he this is how he's, he looks amazing. He never he will only look like this once a year. They'll take a picture of him. <laughs> they'll take a picture of him, and that will be the after picture. And yep. then they'll tell Adam, we'll pay you ten thousand dollars to gain 20 pounds of body fat and they'll make that the before picture and then they show they flip them a lot of times they just yeah they just get you you know like uh, filled up so you're retaining water and everything else and it's like almost day of you can that's you can a make hustle they that's used, a hustle they, they, they switch the before and after they used to hang out at the shows all the time they hang out at the shows and if you and it, they go after the top five people you, mm -hmm. you, you land in the top five and you have the look that they're looking for mm -hmm. then you, they approach you after the show and say hey here's the, just like Sal's saying 
well, $10,000, you know, tell people that you took our supplement or whatever. Yeah, you're going to go off season anyway. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get bulk up over the next couple of weeks anyway. So, you know, call us in six weeks when you're fluffy. That'll be your before. So crazy. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. River, uh-huh. Yeah. Time is, you know, time is relative anyway, right? So it could yeah. be a before and after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Rid- relative. The old tricks. They're just yeah. more effective at it, yeah. you know, these days. Anyway, right. did you guys, speaking of crazy stuff, did you guys see that girl who. <laughs> Who put Gorilla Glue in her hair? What? Oh. Okay, Doug, can you look up? Why would you ever do that? It's, this is it's well, the it's, same generation that eats Tide Pods. It's actually, bro. it's yeah. actually, it's funny, but also heartbreaking. So, uh, no, it, I didn't destroy her hair. Look up girl who put Gorilla Glue in her hair. So this 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 woman, what she did is she usually okay. Do you guys know that? Um, it's like this really really tacky Aquanet. Uh, no, it's not Aquanet. It's like almost like a. It's called glue, uh, and you could put it in your hair and make your hair oh, really. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. So she would spray that in her hair and uh, and you know she would slick it on her scalp so that it was like real tight or whatever. Yeah. Mm. And apparently she ran out. There she is right there. So I don't know if you could pull up her 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 picture. So she ran oh. out of that stuff and she used to like to see how her hair looks. Okay. Yeah. So she ran out and so she said, I'm gonna use gorilla glue. So what you see right there, that picture is her head with gorilla glue on it, and it's literally frozen that way. Yeah. And by the way, for anybody who's never used Gorilla Glue, that is the strongest dude, shit you can yeah, buy you, at the store. You could put oh, like dude. two cinder blocks together with Gorilla Glue. Dude, dude are you kidding oh me? It God. turns into like uh, like a hard plastic or something. Anyway, she sprayed it. So it was a spray. Gorilla Glue sprayed it in her hair, did her hair. That was it. She had to go to a plastic surgeon to get her hair and scalp worked on because that was it. There's, I don't know how you'd possibly get that out. Yeah. How I mean, sad. They, like graft her hair off? Like now, it, I, Doug's got the article pulled up. I mean, does it say what was going through her head? She when just she just thought it would be a, a replacement for her. She's not she's not a very smart girl, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Now now here's here's the best part. You ready for this? Young? How young? Uh, I don't know. Forty. She's forty. Forty. Okay, wow. you should know better. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is like a, like a fifteen year old makes a decision like wow. this. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess good. we could just make fun of her then. So she. So here's the <laughs> here's the worst part. She. Um, is now talking to a lawyer about suing Gorilla, Gorilla Glue. Glue. Yes, come on, Bro, this is such a weird time. Come we know, on, dude. <laughs> no, dude. That is so weird hey, to me. Hey, I, I used your product and it well, worked. I did something stupid. Uh, you should pay for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used Gorilla Glue in my hair. Now hey, it worked in my out head. for my buddy, dude. My buddy got six million dollars out of something like that. No, know? he didn't do something that like that, dude. I mean, no, he didn't do anything that that stupid. But I mean, he stuck his foot in like a you know like a, a grinder thing, right? There, it was like a recycling business thing that he worked in. They they run all this like equipment and things through it, and it's like a it grinds all this shit up. And the thing, the the it was on a conveyor belt, and the stuff was stuck and so he gets up on the conveyor belt and starts kicking it to push it through and it sucks his foot in oh my god and then he hits the emergency now how did he win that lawsuit he, there was a sign that didn't that said you can't kick it didn't, there was no no sign? there was an emergency button that uh, he uh, hit right afterwards and I think it, it didn't work it, right well, that, that's it didn't, legit it didn't fire up right away that's legit though Really? Yeah, dude. That's not like. I well, mean, emergency. Yeah. I don't know. That's like. That's, that's like there's that's, a malfunction. That's like the, and... that's like the McDonald's thing. You no. know what I'm saying like spilling on your lap just because it doesn't have caution, and then you sue over that. No, no? it's not because coffee's supposed to be hot, and also it it would be like yeah, suing... foot grind or uh, gr- things that grind up steel are, are designed to grind yeah, up but, feet too. Yeah, right? but then but then he hit the it stop wasn't button. Smart. Yeah. And the smart the stop button didn't work. That's a lawsuit because it's there yeah, for it's safety. Probably mainly that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that but was the case it, they built around. This reminds me of like suing like fast food restaurants for being fat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, you guys made me fat. Well, actually, you did. Mm. <laughs> you know. So this woman's trying to sue Gorilla Glue, maybe. But I feel so bad maybe. too yeah, when you big, watch yeah. it. Maybe. Well, yeah. I'm I mean, pretty sure Gorilla Glue has warnings on the back of it too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. Warnings are bullshit. I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, nobody reads them anymore because people have gotten so litigious. You go buy a hair dryer, and there's a freaking thousand word warning on it it's so small nobody reads it anymore why do they do that they gotta cover every single base you know what I mean yeah. don't blow dry your hair while you're taking a bath don't use this on an infant in well, the shower well look what people like, do with your products it's, it's insane well what do you think about that do you think that that's a good thing like I think that's stupid I think too many warnings now mean nothing like I said do you read warnings you ever open a product you see the warnings it's like I'm not gonna read this thing yeah I read some warnings. Really? Yeah, it depends on what it is. If it's something new that I don't know what I'm messing with or what that, I've, I've, I'll read something like that. Especially mm. if it's like uh, construction, like Gorilla Glue, I would read yeah. the back of it. Well, I've <laughs> seen that even in like, like coffee shops. They've, they've had all these like, you know, like 
could potentially cause cancer for like all these things in there. I'm you're, like, what is all this? Oh, you're talking about Prop 65 in California. That's what it was. Okay. What is that? What? So Prop 65 in California is, I believe if if there's an, any amount over a certain amount of lead in a product or whatever or something like that, or if it contains something that has been shown to be cancerous, that it has to have that warning label. Here's the problem with it is that everything is like that. So you go in the grocery store, Prop 65 yeah. on the door, Prop 65 I see it all over on the, place. the back. Pro and so when you have, that's my point, when you have so many warnings for everything, it loses value. Nobody yeah. cares anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay, everything's got Prop 65. I don't care anymore. Well, d isn't it shown too that sometimes it, it works the world we reverse, live in right, right now? Because tobacco did that, right? Like with uh, cigarettes, and it didn't like decrease sales at all like when they did that, right? Oh, mm -hmm. you know what worked for tobacco? What? Uh, so they, they don't do it here because uh, the tobacco industry here is pretty powerful. But in other countries, if you buy a packet of cigarettes, it'll have a, and it actually works. It'll have a picture of someone's gnarly ass teeth and gums, or like oh, yeah. a picture of like someone like you know dying from from you know lung disease or whatever. Oh, yeah. on the pack. Now this yeah. now did, that works. The skull and crossbones they did that and that didn't work. No, because right? no. fucking people get tattooed with that. Like, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, cool, dude. I'm a rebel. Yeah, but if you buy a pack of cigarettes and you pull it out in front of your, your girlfriend, your friends like the ugly ass teeth like half falling out and shit. You're like, uh, I don't know. If I, <laughs> I didn't know they did that. Yeah, and I think it's in Europe. That's interesting. Yeah, so you look at the cigarettes uh, and you see like a gross picture. Did I tell you guys <laughs> about when smart. I when I used that strategy on my my son when he was a kid? It was kind of backfired. Felt really bad about it. But what what would you do when he was little? He wouldn't let me clip his toenails because it tickled his feet, and so I used to get like, "Let me clip your no, no, I don't want to. No, come on!" And we used to have to fight. Right? It was this big thing. So you know, twenty year old something something year old Sal, not a very wise dad, is like, "I'm gonna show him a picture." of a really bad ingrown toenail so that he lets me. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I pulled it up on the internet and I scarred the shit out of him. You know, he cried, ah. <laughs> He's like, I don't want my toes to look like that. I was like, oh, no, son, I'm sorry. It's not a He's like paranoid forever. Just oh, like, it's gross, dog. I'm not sorry, buddy. Overly manicuring. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a bad strategy, though. Yeah, look at the pictures that they show on the cigarettes. Like mouth cancer and, Ugh. I mean, I wouldn't want to buy that shit. Yeah. You know, look at that. Look at that with the teeth. <laughs> oh, my God, look at that guy's throat. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, see? Brutal. Yeah, gross. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, good stuff. So you know, you know what I did yesterday because uh, I ran out of my my butcher box is I actually bought a grass fed steak from the grocery store. Oh, mm -hmm. to compare, terrible compared to theirs, bro. I know, it's I know. Way butcher box has the best because here's the thing: with grass fed meat does taste different than uh, grain fed. Grain fed is it's obviously it's got more fat in it, more marbling. It's sweeter. In fact, back in the day when my dad my dad told me back in the day. People would actively choose grain-fed meat because they like the taste more. Of course, right? uh, but we know grass-fed's a little bit healthier and all that stuff. Uh, the Butcher Box does a great job with their grass-fed. It tastes yeah. way. It's the best tasting grass-fed that I've ever had. I threw one of their tri-tips on. I just finally fired up the Traeger. Oh, you and did? It had its first maiden uh, voyage there. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was really good. And that, and we put some of those potatoes that uh, Doug made up in uh, Truckee and and put those in there as well. Wait, too, what potatoes? So. Yeah, they had like garlic and um, a, was it uh, not basil, but uh, Doug made potatoes while we were up there. Rosemary, rosemary. I don't remember Thank potatoes? You. Yeah, it where was I? Day. You, yeah. you weren't that? there. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, you guys, lost, you guys missed out over after Christmas around New Year's. Oh, I had already left. They were like the best potatoes, so yeah, we tried to do. Yeah, I didn't get none of that either. Doug, Doug, yeah, yeah, maybe you left. Doug's like just the Irish guys left over. We'll have potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big potato eater. I yeah. love potatoes. Hey, so yeah. any problems with firing the trigger up? It's a little. You have the same one as I do, right? The digital one you can do with your phone and everything. Yeah, no. So I, I didn't realize. So you have to burn. You know, like you got to go through it the first time to, to to you know run it through and everything. And that took like forever. So we didn't even get to use it the first night that we were going to plan on using it because uh, it ended up being like eight o'clock by the time I was going to be able to start using it and, and start cooking and so uh we just saved the meat and marinated it and everything and so we used it uh, last night but yeah everything went fine what'd you marinate awesome. it what do you marinate it in um uh i don't remember the, the I, I, honestly i don't even remember mm. courtney put that one together oh did she yeah i like the dry rubs you guys got me on the dry rubs that, that's my favorite <laughs> yeah i like I, it because it crusts on there nice. i have yet to do the coffee one that you said i wonder would that be good on a tri-tip the coffee one hundred percent. Oh yeah, it'd be really good. Yeah. yeah. How do you cook? Now you did the tri tip in the Traeger. Yeah. So we did it in the Traeger. So we smoked it first, and then uh, I brought it back and then seared it on both sides uh, that way. And then we, uh, you know, 
that and then I you know served it. It was perfect. You, you that's, the only, that's, about the only, that's the only thing I don't like about the Traeger or any smoker in general for that is that I like the char, the char taste. Like mm. that, uh, yeah. that you, I know Doug doesn't like as much as I do. Uh, well, that's why I always used the, the Weber before that. You know? So do you still, as I say, do you still have a Weber or a gas grill still? Yeah, I might actually start doing that. Yeah, it's like char it, like maybe take it out, like smoke it, then take it out and like char yeah. it on the yeah. Weber. Yeah, yeah, Doug's not a fan of the char, I think, because the carcinogens, right? Is that what it is? Or the yeah, t- partly. No, yeah. I don't, also don't want to eat, you know, burnt Yeah, stuff. Adam likes to do it over an open flame. Yeah, you know like what, it. though? I like it. Here's my, th- my, my theory on the charred stuff. Like, we've, that's the first ways that hunter-gatherers ever cook meat. So I feel like it's overstated. You know what I'm saying? I think so too. You know, of all the stuff that we're we're taking in and that we're doing, it's like that's why the way I look at it is like I know I've seen the I've seen the research on it. Right? It's like there's so many other uh, rocks in my life that I could probably. It's not just I like my meat cooked that way. It's like, uh, but it's even more than that. Like you can look at like you know individual parts of something and say, oh, there's carcinogens here, therefore it's going to be you know bad. But you got to look and see what the actual effects are because. It doesn't always work out that way, right? It doesn't always work out that. Like, for example, uh, you generate a shit ton of free radicals when you exercise. Mm-hmm. In fact, if you were to study someone while they're exercising and afterwards, you'd it, see- it, it would look like the most unhealthy uh, practice uh, ever. Uh, free radicals, yeah. inflammations going up. Oh my gosh, you should never do this. Obviously, it's good yeah, for you. Super inflamed. Or you could get a rock, and I can analyze it. And be like, look at all these beneficial minerals, right? Eating a rock is not going to be good for you, though. Right. So I feel like uh, uh, what they say about the carcinogens in meat that it's cooked right. or charred- that's how hunter gatherers cooked yeah. all meat or well, all food. Well, especially avoiding like dysentery and you know like uh, like bad bacteria. Sure. Things. Do you know the origin of that? Like, what made that popular? What that there's carcinogens? Yeah, that people they start talking about it. It got really popular. I feel like about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, maybe more there. than that. I think was they, it more than that? Yeah. What is this when everybody was like boiling their meat? You know, that was a big thing for a while. Yeah, I think it's just because you can analyze stuff now and see carcinogens. So you could see and oh, this has carcinogens. Therefore, maybe it's bad, but not always. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I feel I feel like there's there's more to the origin of that. I mm-hmm. bet you there's like came from the vegan community or some crazy mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> vegan conspiracy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like my, Adam's conspiracy. Yeah, those theories. are my type yeah. of conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> stays in the nutrition conspiracy. Dude, did I tell you guys about my recording session with Doug the other day? No, uh, you were gonna bring it up, but uh, yeah. I thought there was a hidden camera in here. I thought for sure you guys were pulling a prank on me. Why? What happened, bro? I had so I did a uh, you know I did this uh, like I read it, the teleprompter and I'm doing this thing for uh, it was like a landing page for when the book that I wrote is gonna go out come out soon, right? So yeah. that's gonna come out sometime in April. So I'm doing this thing, and it was literally like no exaggeration, a 15 second read. So that's it. So I'll stand there, I read it, done, right? Yeah. And so Doug sets up. And the setup process can take 30 minutes sometimes because we had to move cameras, do that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he sets it up, and I swear to God, it was at least 20 takes. And almost every single one was something like, the camera shut off. Oh, it's the wrong uh, chip. There's not there's not enough data on this. Oh, I forgot to record the audio. I don't know why I left the the ladder behind you. We got to do it again. It's like twenty times. Like I was waiting for Doug to be yeah. like, "Ha ha, I yeah. got you." I, I paid Doug. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, I well, I think Doug and I have Which talked about this know. before. I think we've agreed that it's you who's jinxed. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. it's you who's yeah. jinxed. You bring the tech play. Because I asked Doug all the time, like, why? I mean, we we do because him and I have to do similar stuff, but for d- different things. And you know, we would only fly right through. And I'm like, why do you and Sal have such a problem doing this? I don't know. I like, think Sal expects bad things to happen so I just ah, subconsciously give you, it to him Doug oh, delivers law of attraction dude Bro. stop attracting all that bullshit at some point I was like alright Doug this, at one point I left you're manifesting because we were this. done Doug's, and it's like Doug's like oh finally we got it everything's working thanks Sal alright Doug I'll see you tomorrow I'm literally walking out the door Sal wait I left the prop behind you I'm sorry I forgot to take a tell like, oh my god oh my bro. god it was a fucking I would say, it was backwards I would say that's my least favorite part of the business I, do, what do you feel about it you don't mind it though you you, you you like doing that no stuff. i actually feel comfortable talking uh to the camera yeah i do it feels very yeah, natural you make to me. love to the camera mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah You're i think you like that's, hey. that's our patreon Ooh, you have to pay for that content yeah. it's not free on, uh, on itunes yeah. or youtube yeah. Yeah. Justin, sorry everybody how do you like that flavor how do you like the flavor you're drinking right there oh the orange one yeah yeah um, it's not bad, but honestly, like the the root beer and the cola, I, I find far superior. Really? Yeah, yeah. those are my favorites. So, I mean, this one's okay. So you guys know those was like a few episodes ago. You guys asked me what was in my supplement bag, and I, there was one supplement I talked about that was for gut health. Yeah, I got so many DMs about what to take or whatever. 
Um, people are very, I think gut health issues are so common. It's insane. I think so many people deal with them. Yeah. It's crazy. So on the topic of Olipop, which is what, uh, Justin was talking about, which is what, what flavor is that? Orange. Uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this is orange squeeze. So Olipop is a, a lot of people think it's a soda replacement cause it tastes like soda. It tastes really good. No sugar or low sugar. Um, very low calorie. I think a can is like 30 calories or yeah, something like that. Five. Uh, it's actually a gut health uh, supplement. So in, the stuff in Olipop are things that that help the mucosa lining in your gut. The things that feed beneficial bacteria. So it's actually a. It's a. It does taste like soda. It's, it's not. It's not soda. There's no, like, again, there's no sugar in it. But it it is a product for gut health. So well, it has anybody's sugar. wondering how many grams of sugar? Just very little. Right. Yeah. It's little. It's not a lot. And it's, I think it's 35 calories. So what do you got? It's 45 calories. Okay. Uh, so five one. grams of sugar. Five grams, the whole can. The whole yeah. can. And how many grams of fiber? Uh, nine grams of fiber. Nine grams of fiber. Yeah. So does it, now are some of the things that are in that, are they, were they in that supplement that you no. were talking so, about? No, uh, so there's antimicrobials that you can use for gut health to help kill uh, bacteria. So that's if you deal with SIBO. And then there are things you can take that help nourish, again, the mucosal lining of the gut, which is a protective lining in the gut that keeps it from getting too inflamed with irritants from food. And there are things that help feed beneficial bacteria, things like certain fibers, for example, that can help with that. So Olipop is not an antimicrobial. It's more of a pro positive gut health to you know nourish yeah. those things. Well, I've told you like Courtney and myself too, have been going through this process of like trying to figure out like our gut issues and everything else. And so like uh, eliminating a lot of like regular sodas, like, and, and it didn't happen all the time, but like even just mixing like it with alcohol or, you know, throughout the day, if I'm eating like a lunch and I wanted like a soda, so I'll just have, you know, Olipop instead mm -hmm. has been, you know, helping with that. That's somewhat. weird. So you soda and alcohol is hurting your gut, huh? <laughs> Strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is, it is I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. Maybe look into cheese. See what you see. No, <laughs> don't take that from him. Don't take it from Justin. Amen. Hey, I wanted to do a video. Do where you want to live? <laughs> or yeah, oh, one day we're gonna get sponsored by Kraft, and you're gonna take that back, yeah. Adam. I, it's right. It's true. It's I had, true. I was I was talking to Justin like we should do a video where you open your wallet, you know, and there's like just, yeah, Kraft singles. Yeah, you know? just, I'm, gonna, you're put, I'm like, gonna go to a strip club with some Kraft singles. They're like dollars. Yeah. That's what our trucky house looks like. Every time I go up there, there's like stashes and drawers. There's like cheese. <laughs> Strings, you say, back up for sure. Maybe it's your family or somebody else. There's like string cheese everywhere. Like yeah. there's all like I'm like, where's all this coming from? This is probably why they think I'm like. Oh, it's not all you. Addict. I assumed no, it was no, you. No, that is mine. Hey, I'll be. Uh, I'll tell you, dude. If I could have dairy, dairy's amazing. Be yeah, honest so with, it's not his family. Are no. you string cheese in it? Are you string cheese in it? Nope. Yeah, it's you, Justin. No. It's not hey, even me, hey, dude. Hey, bro, you're so bad. You fucking sleepwalk and buy fucking cheese. That's, a, <laughs> that's how bad you are. This guy's. Uh, this guy can't have it. This guy denied. I know. I didn't buy none. Of it, yeah, it's I'm, you, I'm dude. For cheese, <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> that's, that's how it is. <laughs> that's not how you use it. <laughs> yeah. First question is from Carly Latessa. How often should you be adding weight to your routine? Uh, I get this question all the time. Okay, so uh, obviously it depends on the person. Here's the deal. Okay, and I want to say this is very clear. There are many, many ways to increase the tension or the, the, the difficulty of an exercise, adding weight is one of them. So if you go into a workout and you're stronger and you want to add weight, one thing you can do is slow down your reps, which will actually produce a very similar effect and actually probably improve your form and reduce your risk of injury. Adding weight, in my opinion, for most people is one of those things that I reserve for later. So when I'm training a client and I notice that they're stronger, I just have them perfect their form or slow down first. Once everything is in, uh, you know, all the pieces are, are in play, this, we've done this now for a few weeks, and everything looks perfect, they've slowed down the reps, they're controlling things, they're going maybe a little deeper on their squat or whatever, then I'll add the weight. So the answer to this is you should increase the intensity or, or of your workout whenever possible, but within those parameters I talked about. That would that would be my answer. Well, what's, uh, Doug, what was the name of the episode? I think it was eight or nine ways to progressively overload. We did an episode. I would refer this person to that, first of all, mm -hmm. to your point, Sal. Yeah. Uh, and I remember training clients, right? So mm -hmm. it, it, really, it really would depend on where this person's level of fitness is at because mm -hmm. uh, tempo, rest periods, rep range, um, those things I would much rather manipulate that before I start to add weight to the bar mm -hmm. for most clients. Totally. Now, 
let's pretend I'm ta- training somebody who's got 10 plus years and they're super advanced, different story. Yeah. I, I definitely want to add weight to the bar and I, I'm going to push that. Although even that person, I'm still manipulating those other things too. Mm-hmm. I just would avoid adding weight to the bar if it's someone who's brand new and I think our form is not like perfect. For right, I want right. that. I want to perfect that and get that down really well before I start loading. Yeah, unless I have like a real competitive like power lifter type client where their you know entire goal is to you know keep increasing the amount of load that they can uh you know you know try and achieve and so uh yeah it, it's way better to kind of assess like um how much control you have how how great your form is like uh and, and then like manipulate all those other variables first but uh you know like increasing load is just another another one of those things that uh, you got to consider in order to gain more strength right and now there's this other strategy that's kind of interesting that i've played with in the past that was very effective this was a, a strategy that was employed by some of the Eastern Bloc um, strength athletes. So this is during the, the when the Soviet Union was a thing and they were dominating in some of the weightlifting sports and we didn't know how they were training. It was what's called the Iron Curtain. So nobody was sharing training secrets or whatever. Of course, when the Soviet Union uh, you know collapsed, we got a lot of their coaches and we learned about some of these training techniques. One of them is very interesting is you pick a weight. Let's say... Uh, for me, you know, let's say deadlifting 315, 315 pounds for eight reps is like 80% intensity, right? So, which is a good intensity to train with. So today I do eight reps with 315. I do that exact same thing for the next, I don't know, five or six weeks, even if the intensity continues to drop because I'm getting stronger. So I go next week, I do eight reps, but now it feels like it's 75% intensity. doesn't matter. I stay at eight reps. Then the next week, then you do this for about five or six weeks. The weight gets real easy. Then you add a lot of weight Mm -hmm. rather than adding weight each time. It's a very interesting strategy. I've actually messed with this in the past and I get tremendous strength gains from doing it. Well, the, the reason is because when the weight gets really heavy, the first thing to go is form. Yeah. And it takes a lot of discipline to still maintain form while struggling to push through a weight. So that's the, I mean, you, to your point about training that way, even what you're, you're practicing, you're practicing, you're getting the mechanics down so well so that when you do start to load the bar and you start to struggle, you don't break form. Totally. If you take a person who's just, just teaching them how to deadlift or squat or any of these movements and all right, we're getting a little bit of traction. I'm feeling stronger, Adam. Let's add some weight. As soon as I add weight, it's like putting them right back down to square one again because they've only got five, six weeks of training, right. and now I just I've made it at max intensity for them. Their form's going to break down. Right now, there's always this, there's this other strategy which is which is opposite, but also very interesting, where you get incremental weights. Have you guys ever messed with these before? Well, two and a half fractional weights. Fra- yeah. They're even smaller. They're like yeah, they're, they're like, like magnets. Yeah, and you you literally will go up every week half a pound. And you just every week you I, like, I like this approach. It is it is kind of like a, I don't know. It's kind of annoying that you know, like it's it's little tiny bits of load that mm-hmm. you don't even really notice. But it's over time. I mean, you start adding that up, and like before you know it, like you've gained like I don't know, like 20, 30 pounds exactly. to that weight. Now the only reason why I like the other strategy that you first mentioned, Sal, better is because what we know is that you have uh, two days of not the best sleep. You calories weren't up all the way, a little bit of stress in your life. And I don't care how good your programming is and your training consistency is those other factors play a role in how strong you're in your workout. And so inevitably you could easily come into a week and be weaker than the week before. And it's not because you're not programming well. It's just that there's other factors that contribute to strength. Totally. Next question is from more life. Is there a certain number of pull-ups or chin-ups you consider to be a good marker of strength? I think if a guy can do 15, ten. well, right. 10 15. to 15, I was going to say 15, yeah. but 10 to 15, you're strong. And for a woman uh, around five uh, pull-ups, you're doing pretty well. Now, here's a problem with giving these general uh, answers is that there's a lot of factors that that uh, can come into play here. You are, If you're a bigger person, it's going to be much harder. You know, if, you're, right. if I'm talking about a 240-pound athlete, Male, 15 pull-ups, wow, that's a lot of pull-ups to be that heavy. You know, if you're a 150-pound guy, 15 pull-ups might not be that much at all. But I think generally speaking, if you're a guy, 10 to 15 is a good number to aim for, and for a woman, uh, about five. Yeah, this is such a hard one to answer, because I think of somebody like... uh uh, what's his name with, with Kabuki Strength? I forget his name all the time. What's his name? Chris Duffin. Chris Duffin, thank you. 
watching that dude do pull-ups is so impressive to me because he's a beat. What is he like, two hundred seventy pounds or something? Yeah, he does everything. Or impressive. Robert Oberst. Remember when he did that? Yeah, or strong? Robert Oberst. Like yeah. that is. So, and then you have someone like David Goggins who can do like a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm less impressed. You know what I'm saying? He's like a paperweight. You have two two <laughs> difference between those two people doing pull-ups is completely different. So yeah. it's it's hard to gauge what's a good number for the you know the general population. I mean. Uh, yeah, the five and ten thing, kind of, but I mean that completely changes based off that person's of, body weight. Of course, mm -hmm. and if and if you can't do, if you're a woman and you can't do not one pull up, and then you get to the point where you can do two, that's phenomenal. It's progress. Progress is what's most important. What's the most amount of pull ups you guys have ever done? By the way, twenty five. Twenty five for you. Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. Twenty five yeah, yeah, is the most I ever, I ever did. You know, it was and that was focused too. Like I was. You were trying to. Get yeah. So I, I did this thing where I, I would do I've fifty. I do fifty pull ups to start every back workout. That was the thing because I wanted to get to a place where I could rep fifty. So you do however many sets it took. Yes. That's the old Arnold workout. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, Arnold did that. Yeah, I don't remember where I got it, but that was like the thing was where every every back workout start with pull ups. You get fifty, and I was trying to get fifty as fast as I could get fifty. So mm. I jump up first set. I get you know maybe 12 15 and then drop down then do again to 10 then to 8 and then keep doing it like that till I got to the 50 and over time I got to a place where I could rep out about 25 of them and I was good body weight but that's something I noticed too is like where my body weight it makes a huge difference oh, yeah. like well yeah th this brings up it's an interesting uh, I thing because of like standardization uh, I've seen too within um, I think it was like a sheriff's department. Uh, they they were were giving them grief about like lessening, like not even having this like standardized test uh, that they had to pass in order to uh, you know become become a sheriff. And and they wanted to to keep it because it's like you want somebody that's like able bodied and capable and strong and and can perform the job at the highest ability. But it was severely limiting uh, the amount of applicants that were applying. Uh, and so the you know the sheriff in charge was like uh, complaining about that they wanted to eliminate the test completely just because they have such low numbers of people wanting to to take on the job wow. see for that I, I have a different opinion on that like for something like that that makes sense to have this standard that you should have to be you able either to do. do the job or you can't or exactly because yeah. that, yeah. that well, general population and we're talking about like a client who just wants to be strong and mm -hmm. is trying to say oh you know oh, i heard on mind pump if i can't do 10 pull-ups i'm not very strong. no it's terrible you know what i'm saying that doesn't matter and like it doesn't and if it doesn't apply to your job every day then who gives a shit? You yeah. could potentially deadlift. I, I know plenty of people that can deadlift 500 pounds but can't even do 10 pull-ups. Right. Yeah. Is, is that person weak? No, they're not weak. No. They're just, they don't do pull-ups. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They don't, they don't strengthen that way. They haven't tried to lean their body out. So like, if your job requires it, though, I think it makes sense. If you're a firefighter, cop, you have to climb a wall, you have to do something like that. Right? Yeah, you should probably be able Did to pull you, your you body weight. Do it. Yeah. Speaking of standards, you guys remember uh, it was a while ago where I brought up that article where the I think it was a military. I remember what branch was going to change their standard for throwing a grenade distance because uh, people were not able to throw a grenade uh, at the at the standard distance or whatever. I thought that was had something to do with uh, like the women's like we, the women couldn't throw it as far as the men could throw it. Well, that, so they were trying to lower the standards. It was for some, but it was something like they had to lower it because so many people couldn't. All of a sudden, it was this old standard. People just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, which is kind of it was like across the board. It was well, like that's another kind of, example of like that should stay there. Yeah. You should have to be able to throw a grenade far enough to not blow your friends up. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be here with us. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what. I mean, it's pretty logical. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very logical. I don't care what sex you are. You. You need to be able to fucking throw this thing far enough so we don't die. <laughs> Just like toss it on the ground for any. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. most impressive. Uh, uh, Paul Check impressed the shit out of me with, with his pull up. Remember when he came here? He's like fifty one something arm. year old guy, and he's not like small. He's a muscular dude. He's a one arm pull ups out there. Yeah. Like, are you gotta be kidding oh, he's me? A beast. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Next question is from Jen Rose Hair. What are your thoughts on using a chiropractor for adjusting back issues? If you go to a chiropractor mm. and all they do is adjust you. They suck. Yeah. Don't go to them anymore. That's my. That's a. That's a hundred percent. You're just uh, looking to get cracked. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So it's, a, it's the same to me as a, if you go to a trainer and all they do is work you out hard. Mm -hmm. yep. That's if you go and Very you similar. hire a personal trainer and your first five sessions look like this, you just getting your ass kicked and you show you coming back up. Your trainer sucks. Totally. Chiropractor is the same way. If you go see your chiropractor and all he does is pop you, crack you, make you feel good for that moment, and you go and that's all of what you get from him. Terrible chiropractor. Right. Now here's why. Okay. If you do an adjustment on somebody and and they feel better, but you don't correct the reason why they're out of alignment. I'm putting in quotes because that's the terminology, right? If you don't correct the reason why they're in pain in the first place, if you don't correct the root cause of why they're out of alignment, they're just going to go back to where they were before, and then they're going to have to come see you again. And so you see this pattern with some chiropractors where they'll sell these big set, these big packages of sessions, and you got to go see them every single week. I got to go see my chiropractor on, on every Monday, otherwise I start to feel bad. 
Here's what a good chiropractor looks like. They use adjustments judicious, judiciously, but they use a lot of exercise and correctional movements and mobility movements to correct the root cause of why you're hurting in the first place. Those are the ones you want to go see. But the adjusting people, who, and then even worse, I don't remember what they called it, but it was like this. In the chiropractor world, there's like these, these people that, that teach chiropractors how to make more money. Mm -hmm. And one of the strategies was to have lots of beds lined up in the same room and you set people up in these beds and you adjust this person, adjust that person, yeah. adjust. And so you see six or seven people. Like, like a factory line. Yeah. And I don't remember what it was called, but there was, there was a terminology for it. And it was just, I remember one time one of my clients went to one of these people. The whack them and crack And factory. I saw it and I'm like, oh, this is a this is just an adjustment factory. And yeah. the dude's charging everybody here. I've been the one like that where it's like they, they break up the appointments like eight minutes apart mm. oh, wow. for the entire hour. So, you, you know, this person's getting in five, five, eight people in every every hour. Well, to you also have to play place a little bit of guilt uh, back on the consumer coming in because the expectation for them is that uh, they're going to feel good and be relieved in that instant moment and then walk out and, you know, go about their day. But it just doesn't stop there. Like you have to look for somebody that actually is going to give you a plan and, you know, get to the root of the issue and, and give you something of substance. Well, this is why it's so deceiving. I mean, that was why it was so hard as a trainer to like explain this to clients that had chiropractors. And many times I get a client and they had a, they've had a chiropractor for three years and they love him or her but i feel good yeah exactly when they, when they adjust because they go so do it and and they and doesn't even matter you can sit there and explain yeah. everything you just talked about right now and it's like, it's like in yeah, one year whatever, out the other dude. because i feel better every time i do it so and the, and the truth is it's the the adjusting part is not the bad part it's just they they need to complement that with exercises yes. and stretches to go along with yes, it you yes. know and and honestly uh, uh, I, it, it, my, this is my opinion because maybe some chiropractors have different, but I, I like a chiropractor who doesn't even put you on a table and adjust you for the first like few sessions. The first few sessions. They're doing assessments. Exactly. Just, that's how I feel like a trainer is. A tra if, if a trainer gets you and it's day one, he just met you and he's out kicking your ass on the floor right away, he's yep. a fucking terrible trainer. Yep. Yeah. The for, for me, the first at least three to four sessions is feeling my client out. Watching them move, watching them squat, watching them lift a leg, watching them get up off the ground, asking them questions, assessing their diet. Like all these things factor in when I'm designing a program for them that, that's going to get them not only their results, but also serve them long term. A good chiropractor should do the same thing. Yep. Next question is from John Falbert. Why is pop culture so anti red meat? <laughs> oh, I hate this. You know, there, this actually this goes way back to when uh, saturated fat and cholesterol became uh, demonized. Now, this was based off of really, really crappy. I think it was called the Seven Countries Study or whatever, where they actually omitted a few countries that didn't fit into this, you know, this narrative. But uh, this was when the our government took on this narrative that dietary cholesterol and saturated fat were the reason why we were seeing rising rates of heart disease. Now, of course, what has cholesterol and saturated fat? Red meat. So that's where it started, right? It started there. Um, by the way, it's all false. Um, in, in very small subsets of the population, they should watch their saturated fat intake. Dietary cholesterol, almost nobody needs to care about. Actually, doesn't really impact your cholesterol. There's a few, there's a very, again, small percentage of the population where this becomes a thing. But for most people, it's not an issue. Um, but that's where it started. Then it was the uh, red meat is bad for the environment. That's what we're hearing now, which, mm -hmm. you know, we, we I did a great podcast with uh, Rob Wolf where he talks about how it's way more complicated than that. It's not as, as simple as it seems. But it's total, It's it, this is total bullshit. If you have a balanced diet, red meat's one of the healthiest things you could eat for most people. It's got the nutrient density of red meat is so phenomenal. Okay. It's one of the only foods that you could eat by itself. Now, I don't recommend this. Okay. I'm not saying this is a good idea or this is a great diet, but it's one of the only foods you could eat by themselves always and eat nothing else. And you probably won't have a nutrient deficiency. You can't say that with any other food base at all, especially any plant food. So red meat, very, very, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it's healthy, especially if it's quality red meat, like grass-fed meat that we get that we talked well, about earlier. The pop culture thing, I think, has mostly to do with the environment, right? So we're talking about pop culture right now and why is it so popular to be uh, anti-red meat. I mean, you look at the documentaries that we took, Game Changers and What yeah. the Health, like that came out with this that made people think that if you are not eating meat, you're helping save the planet. And that's been a big movement for the last decade and a half. So I, that's why I think it's so mm -hmm. popular right now is that 
I know because I have family like this. I've got a little niece and nephew that, you know, they're teens, 20s, and they all of a sudden switch to vegan out of nowhere, not for any health reasons whatsoever, but because they think they're saving the planet mm -hmm. by stopping eating red meat. And so that's become trendy and popular to do that. So it's not like, oh, I'm being healthier so much, which I think that was more so what you alluded to before like with cholesterol and things mm -hmm. like that and fat, I think it has more to do with like, I'm saving the earth. It's it's the Prius drivers. You know, I, yeah. bet, I bet you you look up something on that. I bet you like half the damn Prius drivers are also vegan well, well, because sure. they're saving the planet. Sure, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it's interesting bringing this up. I was talking to Courtney about this too. She's reading through Dr. Becky Campbell's book and I think she had a uh, an excerpt in there uh, from Chris Kresser. And he, he actually like was talking about like the modern day hunter gatherers. And so there's still tribes out there that, you know, just live off of like what they hunt and, mm -hmm. and, and field and whatnot. And they outperformed and, and are superior, uh, on all health markers, uh, to people living in the industrialized world. And, and it's like measures like BMI, blood pressure, vision, bone density, cardiovascular function. And so it's like, you know, just to look at like how we've formed into all these like dietary habits, you gotta you gotta put a lens on there and see if we're doing a good job or not. Yes, and when I say red meat, I'm talking about just meat, right? So you know, if somebody eats a lot of cheeseburgers, uh, then that's not good, right? The the meat itself might be okay, it might be not the greatest quality, but there's you know cheese in there, there's spreads, there's mayonnaise and stuff, there's bread that's in there, probably comes along with some French fries. I'm, when I say red meat, I mean just a red meat. I mean, in my experience, when I was working with clients, especially women who had issues with menstruation. So I'd, sometimes I would get clients who, women who'd over-dieted uh, or over-trained and they weren't getting their period and their hormones were all off and I'd work with a functional medicine practitioner alongside one. One of the things that would be recommended always was to increase the red meat consumption, good quality red meat, like you know steak or, or grass-fed you know, ground beef or whatever, and it would balance them out and they would feel amazing. Um, it's got a high concentration of creatine. Creatine's got some incredible... Uh, health properties. Of course, the amino acid profile is amazing. It the fat, fatty acid, con, you know, content of red meat, especially grass-fed meat, red meat is good. Um, it's a very healthy thing to eat. But again, it's not processed meat. So I'm not talking about hot dogs right. or bologna, bologna or that kind of stuff. I'm talking about like steak, you know, or maybe good quality ground yeah. beef, grass-fed, uh, grass-finished. Yeah, there, there you're gonna have the the good quality. But you know, even the grain-fed steak or ground beef is okay. It's not as good, but it's still yeah. okay. Right. But no, this crusade against red meat is, is silly. And it's just, if they move from one thing to another, <clears throat> in my opinion, one of the reasons why pop culture is so anti just meat in general is because it's one of the foods that really can't be patented. Yep. You know, they can, they can produce GMO plants or they could produce fake meat products like Beyond Burger. Beyond Burger is patented. That's a patented formula. Yeah. I can't make that. Now, if I make, if I sell a steak, I'm a, you know, I have a, a farm or whatever, and I sell a steak. I can't patent my steak. Mm -hmm. Someone else. So it's a, it's there's a lot of money that is behind, you know, kind of with nefarious uh, intentions to demonize meat in general because it's not a patentable. This is my opinion, but mm -hmm. it's not a product that's patented like. You know, like GMO soy or, or corn or that kind of stuff. A vegan that drives a Hummer is better for the environment than someone who eats meat and drives a Prius. Is that what it says? It's, yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's like a famous article that went viral a couple <laughs> years ago. Dude. Well, you know, Rob Wolf said that, um, that you know, in the farming, the animals in farming yes. make up about 3% of all of the, you know, greenhouse gas emissions. And reducing and eliminating animal products would only cut that down by a half. Well, what tripped me out most about that conversation uh, in, in that uh, podcast was how he was talking about, like, desert desert areas and plains that used mm. to be grass and how they can actually like bring that back by introducing animals and, you know, and, and hunting and, you know, having this like ecosystem uh, rebuild itself and it uh, can actually then counter a lot of the carbon uh, emissions. Totally. And I mean, and, and then from a performance standpoint, I'll tell you what right now, uh, strength athletes from day one were advocates of eating uh, red meat. You, you notice a difference in your performance okay. and strength. So yeah, I'm, I, I tell you, there's very few people that I'll have when I would train clients. And again, I would always work with nutrition experts, but very few people that we would tell to reduce their saturated fat intake or cholesterol intake um, who were otherwise eating healthy, right? Otherwise it was like, all right, let's cut your sugar intake. Let's cut your processed food intake. By the way, if you look at the obesity epidemic, they tried to pin it on 
fat, then they tried to pin it on sugar. The reality is it's heavily processed foods. It's it, the more processed foods we eat, the more obesity goes up and it just, it makes us overeat. And that's the problem. It's not meat. Uh, so look, mind pump is recorded on video as well as audio. You can come find us also on YouTube, mind pump podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram, except for me because I'm shadow banned. You can find Justin at mind pump, Justin, you could try finding me at mind pump Sal and you can find Adam at mind pump Adam. Wrong. You can look at, you can speculate on what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to suck. No, no, no. Don't do that. Just literally take the energy, it's just energy, and and just shift it about three feet over here and start looking at how you can make this work for you. It's just 